Hey everyone, in this video we are going to use the 3D Modeler Asset Forge to create a 2D isometric image. So let's get started. At the top here, you see the selector to choose the category of block that you want. We will go to Primitives, and we're just going to take a block, and we're going to place it in the scene. Just so you know, that dot there, that's the center point of the model that you're going to export, or the image that you're going to export. Before we do anything this, with this, let's give it a color. That way, when we duplicate it, it'll duplicate with that color. So say we're trying to make grass. We will go to the Paint Roller tool up here, and we'll go to Material, and we'll go to New Material, and a new material appears. You just click on that. You get a typical color picker. And we're just going to choose a green. So you choose a color along the side, and then choose the one that you want. And then you just click on an object. You click on a block. Now, if I have this selected, this material, and I change it, this will automatically change. So if I have like 30 of these using that material, if I change the material, they'll all change. They're not going to keep the previous color because the material that is being used has changed. So now it's green for grass. So now we click on it. Control D will duplicate it. You get a little prompt saying that one block was cloned. Now I'm going to hold shift, slide this over. Now I'm going to hold shift again. Now, so shift is to doing two different things. If I'm trying to move a block and I hold shift, it will constrain it to one axis. If I'm trying to select multiple blocks and I'm holding shift and I click, that lets me select multiple. So if I have it selected and I hold shift, moves. If I have something selected, I'm not trying to move, I hold shift and I click, then I select multiple ones. So control D, hold shift, slide those over. And we're going to make this seven wide. So let's just grab three instead of all four. Control D, and we'll slide those over. Now we'll duplicate this whole thing. Okay. Control D, hold shift, slide it all over. Control D, hold shift, slide it over. Control D, slide it over. Now maybe we're going to want a lake here. So Control D, slide this over. And then we're going to delete some blocks. So we're just going to click on that one, delete, click on that one, delete, click on that one, delete. Click, shift, click, shift, continue to hold shift, click, click, control D, slide those over. So that way I don't have to make and delete again. And then one more time, control D. And now we can go back to having a full line so we'll just grab this one here control d hold shift now by the way if you're wondering how i panned like that that's pressing down on the scroll wheel the mouse wheel that's holding down the mouse wheel and that's just panning the rotation is hold down the right mouse button and that lets you rotate the camera now say we want to fill this with water so we'll just take another block, place it in there. And again, before we start duplicating, let's add a color to it. So we'll click up here, material, new material. We'll click on that. And this time we're going to choose like a blue color. Click on it. And now select it, control D, hold shift, shift click, control D. Actually, could have done this better. Yeah, actually, you couldn't do it this way. Control D, shift this over, and then grab those three. Control D, shift over. So now you've got yourself a nice little lake, a little pond, whatever, something that they can't traverse. So if you want this to be slightly lower, we probably should have made the first one shorter, but you can indeed shorten multiple ones at one time. OK. 
Okay. And that's what this dot up here. So now it's set down a little bit. Oh, I missed one. Although that's a nice effect. You could maybe have a, a ground here, but we'll shrink it down to just to be consistent. Okay, so now you've got a little lake that they can't pass. Now what we'll do is we're just going to extend this out a couple more. So control D, hold shift, slide. Control D, slide. Now what we're going to do, we're going to make like a perch here. This is going to go up a couple blocks high. And that's where your boss would be situated, your map boss or whatever. So we're going to click Control D, and now we're going to use that up arrow. And you don't have to hold Shift because unlike this middle tool, which can go in two axes, this is only one axis and one direction along that axis because you've got a separate arrow for down. Now we're going to duplicate that and raise that one up too. Not quite sure why it jittered like that. I notice it gets a little bit buggy like that. Okay, so usually with games like this, there's two ways to get to a higher point. You either have like a, uh, a slope, so we'll do that in one side, or you have like half blocks coming up and that they can only climb up the half blocks or climb up the slope. That if they're like right here, they can't jump all the way up. So as you can see, this is part asset forge tutorial and part game design because you don't make these things in a vacuum you actually when you're designing the level you're thinking about the functionality with it so let's go ahead and take the wedge here we'll just place it here and it will be green so we'll go to our material we'll select that color it now you can rotate it so this is the rotate tool and you can rotate on x y or z so the bottom one is y and that one changes it to X or Z, don't remember. And that one changes it to X or Z. So you can have all three axes. It's just which one do you want to rotate it on. Now, right here is how many degrees it turns per click of the tool. So it defaults to 15. I'd actually recommend something like 45 because that's usually the angle people use, like 90 or 45 degrees. Um, or in this case, I'm not going to do anything 45 degrees, so I'm just going to bump this up to 90. And yes, that is a very dark gray button on a black background, so it looks like it's inactive, but it actually works. And now we just rotate. So let's move that up. Let's hold shift and slide that over. And see, it's one click too high, so we'll move that down. There we go. Let's copy this one, duplicate. Hold shift, slide that over, and now we're going to control D, hold shift, slide that over, and then move that down. Now, just as you can change the rotation, you can also change how much it moves. Right now it's set to one-tenth of a grid. This lets you move a full grid. So just so you know, but I, I like the 10th the because it gives you a, a much more um, gradual gradient, uh, 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 the ability to move it more subtly rather than a whole block. Now on the other side, we're going to do partial blocks. So let's take this one. We're going to go Control D, hold Shift, slide that over. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this and then want to shrink it because we said that the player can only climb half a block. So click, control D, scroll that up, and then we're going to take this tool up here and we're going to scroll this down, okay? Or you can go right into this tool here and shrink it by half. So right now, it's scale is showing, there we go, 0.5. For whatever reason, I had to click away for it to refresh. So we said half a block is exactly what we wanted. So if math really matters, you can come in here and just type it out. And so now what we'll do, we now duplicate this block again. And then we duplicate this one again. And one of the things that you've done, again, talking about game design, is you're actually adding an extra step that going up the slope would be faster because this is flat and you're going up just over three. 
here you have to climb up here and then climb up here and usually when you're climbing up steps like that there's usually like a movement penalty so things to keep in mind when you're designing your environment now the temptation may be to put like obstacles here here's the problem and again we get into the game design let's go to western and say we want a block right here I'm not sure why they make the block so small to begin with. Let's make it a little bit bigger so it's closer to the size of the other blocks. So if we have the tool selected and an object selected, we can change the scale as I was just showing you. So let's do three by three by three. That's pretty close to a full block. That looks like that's lined up about as good as we want to get for this particular demo. So here's the problem. The image is going to look something like this. Since it's not an actual 3D environment, your character really can't walk behind that because this is a solid image. So obstacles like that, you really don't want to make part of this. What you would do is this would, has to be, would be exported separately, and I'll explain a little bit more how you do that. But if, if something needs to block your player as far as visually it would be in front of your player, then it really can't be here. This will be fine, though, because what's going to happen is the angle will be such that they'll still be on top of this. This one wouldn't work so much, though. So, and you can add other things, like, for instance, if your player is in front of the object rather than the object being in front of your player, then you can add things like rubble. So, like, for instance... Actually, let's go back to the block. Now let's go back to the cast, uh, the crate. I was going to use rubble, but actually, I'm also use the same object to demonstrate this. Now, if the perspective is like this, and your player walks here, that's fine. Your player will be in front of this because he's never going to walk behind the block. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now. Here's how you turn it into an isometric image. It's actually a built-in function. File, export sprite. Now, as you can see, it's zoomed in too close, so we're going to have to make a few setting changes. It's it's almost centered, though, because like I said, I, was, I pointed to where that arrow was. Didn't quite center it, but that's okay. This is not etched in stone. So over, over here, this is really what gives you the isometric view, the rotation. So 35 on the X axis 45 on the on the y and zero on the z okay so distance we want to zoom back because it's too close so distance let's make that five almost right and let's make that six and by the way this is just a preview this is not the actual size for a reason no matter how large the image is the preview stays the same so let's now do let's go back a little bit more so let's do seven there we go now like i said we're gonna to have to rotate this a little bit that way your player can go up here so it won't, won't look weird with them being on top of it so the rotation is really the y-axis so i think maybe 40 we want it to rotate to the right almost Let's do so 35 by 35. Basically, the key is you want to see a little bit of the ground so your player can stand on it and not have it look weird. There you go. So now you'd have ground for your player to stand on. That would probably look good. And then it's just changing the size. Like maybe you want this to be 1024 or 2048. And then you just click on export file. I'll do that and then we'll come back and then you'll see the final image. And there we go. There is our final image. So you might want to tweak it a little bit, like maybe rotate the X a little bit because we rotated Y. So maybe it needs to be above it slightly more so you can see a little bit more of that ledge. But again, that's your decision, what you feel looks correct. And if you wanted to have, like I said, objects blocking 
certain paths, but it needs to be in front of your player and your player needs to be able to walk behind it, you would export those separately. So you would create the crate, you would center it, and then you would export it with exactly the same distance and exactly the same rotation. If you don't, it would look weird. Okay, so I think that should do it for this tutorial. I hope you found this helpful. I'll probably do a follow-up video in Unity, actually adding this to a game and go through the basics of how to make an isometric game. If you have any questions or any requests, please put that in the comments, and I hope you found these useful, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.